thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think staff did a great job for our committee today explaining to all what this amendment does. Uh, this amendment is not a new idea. As a matter of fact, it's been something that has been talked about in the legislative body for several years. What this amendment does is it removes from this bill the excise tax on exported fuel of six cents and replaces it with the policy to utilize the sales tax collected by the state of Washington on new vehicles and used vehicles throughout the state. Uh, this is a bill that uh, has been talked about because there's a natural nexus between what is collected on vehicles and transportation. Mr. Chair, this amendment solves a major problem, both with the underlying bill, but more so with our transportation revenue problem. Mr. Chair, you and I have talked extensively about the need for sustainable long-term funding for our transportation, especially when it comes to maintenance and preservation. Now, when we think of maintenance and preservation, that's fixing bridges, and guardrails, and all the different things, but it's also projects in every corner of the state of Washington, every one of our constituents, every one of our districts that has these projects that are so in need of the dollars. And although the underlying bill does address that with a significant funding, what this would do is supplant that with a long-term, over a billion and a half per year, able to collect immediately starting this year to start solving the problem with our long-term revenue problem for our transportation budget. But Mr. Chair, it would also do something more importantly, and that is I think it would answer and resolve some of the underlying concerns and questions that we are hearing from our neighboring states about this fuel excise tax. And Mr. Chair, with your indulgence, I may ask if I could read a few statements with regards to this? Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, today, Mr. Chair, in the state of Idaho, a joint resolution by the Senate and House of Idaho was read in and adopted. And it reads as follows, and I'll just read a few excerpts from it. Whereas the state of Idaho and the state of Washington have always enjoyed a supportive and mutually beneficial relationship. And whereas strong cooperative relationship amongst states is the best interest for residents of both states. I'll skip down. Whereas the proposed tax would impose an enormous financial burden on Idahoans in the name of offsetting Washington business costs, and the proposed tax would further impose an additional burden and cost on many Idaho businesses. Whereas Idahoans should not be subject to a tax imposed by a legislative body in which they have no representation, Mr. Chair. It is further resolved that the legislature strongly opposes a trade war imposed by one state against another. And lastly, it is further resolved that the legislature will take any and all action necessary to block this new tax on the citizens of Idaho who should never be subject, subjected to taxation without representation. Mr. Chair, may I read just two or three more quick? Yes, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. From our neighbor to the south, the governor of Oregon, who has submitted uh, several comments recently. This was a tweet that was put out just a couple days ago. This is right now Washington State is moving a bill that will tax Oregonians to fund Washington's transportation package. Yes, you read that right. Washington wants to tax Oregonians at the pump for their transportation costs. Mr. Chair, from a representative in Alaska who I talked to just the other day, Representative Kevin McCabe, he stood up in front of his body and proposed several new bills introduced into the legislative body in Alaska, including taxation against those who do business in Washington state, a six cents a pound tax on the fish caught in the Alaskan waters, a six cents tax on boats from Washington state that would be moored in Alaska. And another one that is being introduced is a $15 a barrel tax on crude oil that is produced in Oregon that would be shipped here to be refined. Mr. Chair, that's a trade war with our neighboring state. He said in his comments on the floor of the House 
in, or in Alaska. He said, quote, I'm tired of being treated like a Washington colony, and therefore I urge the body's support of the bills put forth. Finally, Mr. Chair, we heard the other day from two representatives from Oregon who testified in front of this committee about the impacts about this proposed excise tax. And Representative Bouchard Davis said, this is an offensive proposal that would force Oregonians to pay for Washington's infrastructure projects. So Mr. Chair, as I've presented to this committee today as an amendment to solve two problems. One, to provide a long-term, stable, sustainable revenue source in a time that Washington State has never seen the revenue that we have seen, over $15 billion in surplus projections that are uh, unbelievable, where we could prioritize those dollars to assist with the work that you and I in this committee has done and, will, and future committees will do in order to sustain our transportation network for the people of Washington State. And secondly, Mr. Chair, this amendment, if adopted today, will send a signal to our neighboring states of Oregon, Alaska, and Idaho that we do not intend to start a trade war. We do not intend to afflict taxation without representation. We intend to look for revenue sources to fund our needs in Washington state. And by adopting this amendment, we have found one that will do exactly that. Mr. Chair, I thank you for the indulgence of the ability to read those today. And I ask for this committee and you to adopt this amendment to the underlying bill. Thank you.